Welcome back to part two in the series all about using Genially for teaching. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Genially to create assessment presentations for your students. Now, before we get started with this video, I do recommend that you go back and watch the first video in this Genially series first, because that is where I dive into the basics of Genially and how to use all of the different features that it comes with, because there are a lot. Um, and we're gonna be using a lot of those features when we're creating our assessments inside of Genially. So make sure you've watched that video first, and then when you're ready, let's jump on my computer and create an assessment. So if you watched the first video in this Genially series, you will have seen me have made this presentation about ancient Egypt. So now what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and add some quiz questions to the end of this presentation. So that way students can kind of review what they have already learned. So I'm going to scroll to the end and anytime I add a quiz to the end of a presentation, I like to make sure students know, like they are transitioning from learning information to reviewing the information. So I'm gonna create a new title slide by just duplicating this one and then dragging it down here. And I'm just gonna create a title that lets them know, like this is the review portion of the lesson. So I'm gonna put quiz time. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to create some questions for the students to answer. So I need to add some new slides in and I've got two options. I can either click add page and select one of the template pages that are already here or I can just duplicate one of these pages and add in my information. A lot of times what I find is the easiest thing to do is I just duplicate a slide and then edit it. So I'll just duplicate this, drag it down, and then I'm gonna edit it for what I want. Okay, I'm gonna move this box to the top and I'm going to put my question in it. So we'll just reuse the fonts and everything that are here. Okay, and my first question is going to be, where is Egypt located? And I want to fix this text up a little bit. First of all, I don't like that it's all caps. So if I want to change it to a standard font, I'm gonna click the two T's and you'll see it's made it so only the things that should be capitalized are. And the next thing I want to do is I want to center this. And then there also seems like there's a lot of spacing between the letters. So I'm gonna click on letter spacing and I'm gonna minimize that a little bit. Okay, I think that is easier for my students to read. Now, for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in images of different continents and the students have to click on the correct continent. So I'm going to click on image and of course Africa is the correct answer. So we'll just go ahead and add that one there. And then I've got some images of South America and North America on my computer that I'm going to add in. Okay, now what I'm also going to do is I am going to put the name of each continent underneath just to make it a little bit easier for my students in case they look at it and they're not sure what it is. So there's Africa and then I'm just going to click Control C. Okay, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set up, I'm gonna have two quiz questions at the end of this presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the slides with the questions. And then after I get the questions set up, I will show you how to um, set it up so that students know whether they're correct or not. But for right now, let's just get the questions on the slides. So I'm gonna click pages again, and I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna duplicate this slide delete what I don't need and we'll say which river is in Egypt and I can actually add in an image of the Nile River that I have saved on my computer. Um, this image was also part of the presentation so it might also be a refresher for students. And for this question what I'm going to do is I'm going to have three multiple choice elements and they're going to click on the correct button. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create the button. So I'm going to click on resources 
And under shapes, I am going to pick a square and I'm gonna turn it into a rectangular button and I'm going to make three of these. Now to change the color, I'm just gonna click on the color box up here and select the color that I want. And then I'm going to create three of these by clicking Control C and then Control V two times. And Genially will pull these lines up so that I can line them up just right. Now I'm going to add a text box over top of each of those uh, buttons so that students can see the different choices. So I'm just gonna click on text and then click the text that I want. See, the first choice will be Mississippi River. Now, one thing I wanna do is I wanna keep the text box inside of the box because now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna group the text in the box together to make it all one button. And if the text box is outside of the box, then that means when I group them together, if students click outside of the box because the text box is out there, it will cause the interactive elements to appear. Um, so make sure the text box is inside of the box. And then to group these together, you're gonna click on the text, hold down the control button on your keyboard, and then click the box. And then you're going to click this little circle icon to group them together. Okay, so now we're going to do that for each of the boxes. Next I'll do Yellow River. And same thing, I wanna move the text box inside of the box. I'm gonna hold down the control button and click both of the elements and I'm gonna group them together. Okay, so now each of the options are grouped into individual buttons. So if students click on the text or anywhere inside of those boxes, it will either tell them it's correct or incorrect. Now, I've got my two review questions at the end of this presentation. So now what I need to do is I'm going to create slides that tell students they are correct if they click the correct answer. So once again, I'm just going to duplicate what's here and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of pretty much everything that's here. I'm gonna keep the text, but get rid of everything else. And I'm gonna change this to correct because when students come to this slide, I want them to know that they've clicked on the correct answer. I'm gonna make this really big for them. And then a lot of times what I like to do is I like to reward students when they get to the correct slide. So either I have fun music playing on this slide or a lot of times what I will do is I will add in a GIF because students love these. So let's see if we can find something related to Egypt, maybe like a camel. And I'll look at some of the options. This one might be a fun one for students. So when students come to this slide, they'll know they're correct. The students will think this is kind of funny. Now I want to add a border around my GIF. So I'm just gonna click here and I'm going to give it a border. This little half moon icon will allow you to add borders and shadows to your images. Okay, so now I'll go back to pages and I want two of these because I want a correct page for each slide. So I'm gonna duplicate it. And then what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that there's a correct slide after each of the question slides. So you'll see we've got question, correct, question, correct. Now what we need to do is we need to link the actual correct answers to each of those slides. So I'm going back to my first question and when students click on Africa, I want it to go to the correct slide to show them that they clicked the correct answer. So click on Africa and then remember this little pointer icon is how you make it interactive. And we're gonna click go to page and then we're gonna click the next slide that says correct. So when students click on this, it will go to that slide. Now I want them to know when they, if they click on one of the distractors that they're incorrect. So I'm gonna add a window to each of these so that students know to keep trying. So I'll add a window. I'm gonna make the text centered, bold. I wanna make it really big and we'll say keep trying. And we'll do the same thing for North America. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to do the same thing with the next question slide. The Nile River is the correct answer. So when they click on that one, we want them to go to the page that tells them they're correct. So we're gonna click on the slide immediately after that. 
and then we want them to know if they click on one of the other ones to keep trying. So we're gonna have a window pop up that tells them to keep going. Okay, now my assessment is pretty much finished. So let's test it to make sure it works. So let's start here. If we click on this eye icon, we can preview it to make sure everything works. Okay, so we can see that if they click one of the incorrect answers, they'll know that they're incorrect, but if they click Africa, it will tell them it's correct. Same thing with this. If they click an incorrect answer, they'll get a pop-up letting them know to keep trying, but if they click Nile River, they will know that they are correct. So that is how you create your self-checking assessments inside of Genially. Now I've been creating a lot of assessments on Genially lately and I really like it. I find that the students that we've tested these with have been really engaged and they enjoy interacting with it. The one thing that I will tell you is that there's no way for you to keep track of how your students are responding on the Genially presentation. So you're not going to get any data back from it. Your students will be able to see whether they got the answer correct, but you won't be able to see that unless you tell them to send you a score or send you some feedback afterwards. So I recommend that when you are creating your assessments inside of Genially, that you do this as a form of formative assessment rather than summative assessment. But like I said, this is still a great way to get your students interacting with content and reviewing content. So that's all I've got for today, but make sure if you have not already to like this video and subscribe to my channel. We've got a few more Genially videos coming out over the next month that will show you a lot of other really fun and cool things that you can do inside of Genially that you can't necessarily do with all other programs that allow you to create interactive presentations. So until next time, happy teaching.